Ciao, Julia. Welcome to the show, Meeting Interesting People. Uh, today, my guest, Julia Picalva, poet, musician, and more. And we have our interview via Zoom uh, from United States to Italy. Welcome to the show, Julia. Thank you, Yelena. Thank you very much for inviting. And uh, I uh, say ciao to all your viewers. Thank you. So um, as a poet, of course, we should start uh, with the poem, uh, which was written just recently uh, and translated. And you can say the um, person who translated the poem. And then we will be listening first in English and then I will ask you to read in Russian also, because that was original written in Russian. Um, <clears throat> yes, I would like to start with a very new poem that fortunately was translated into English just two days before. I wish I did not have a reason to write it. I don't even use my own words. I use only a biblical, you shall not kill, and the cliches of Russian propaganda. Two comments before I start. Z, the letter Z that you will hear twice written like this is not in the Cyrillic alphabet, but now it is used in Russia to brand the special operation. That's how we in Russia must call uh, this war. And the poem is dedicated to the war that unfortunately currently is going uh, between Russia and Ukraine. I will not pronounce the last word because I don't want the propaganda to have the last word, but you will guess it. And you will hear my poem in the brilliant translation of Anna Krushelnitska. Thank you, Anna. Don't kill. Don't kill. No one is killed. They are all living. Don't kill. At least now we are even Stephen. Don't kill. Let them crouch in the basement some more. Don't kill, but killing was fine before. Don't kill. It was them. They killed their own. Now they sit under rubble, calling out to the West. Now they moan. Don't kill. They aren't even a nation. They need a firm hand. What we do to them, we do as a friend. And we won't rest till they see it's best for them to be saved from the wicked West. Don't kill. Then they will kill us. Glory to the special operation. Glory to the Spetsnaz. Glory to Russia's military force. Thanks to them, the planet is staying its course. Glory to Putin, the savior and crusher. Glory to Russia. Don't kill. The world lies in evil lies. Put a white armband on it. Now it's one of our guys. Then we'll point our guns away. It can stay. Don't kill. For peace, we'll do what it takes. Don't kill. Precision strikes on the Nazis. The commander makes no mistakes. Don't kill. You know, this issue has two sides. Don't kill. Sending you a rug and the kid a code in his size. I'll mail a larger one once I find it as well. In hell. Don't kill. We remind the traitors sweeping fifth column of their granddads in the gulag. That's where we can hold them. Don't kill. The world doesn't know what good news we bring in this upheaval. We are the pure, absolute, unadulterated. Thank you. Thank you, Julia. I think, Elena, that uh, for, to read it in Russian is really too long, and the translation of Anna is so brilliant. Uh, I would rather prefer to read later on another poem in Russian, if you don't mind. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So just um, let's start to talk about yourself first. Just tell the people, um, to our viewers, how uh, long ago you just start to write poetry. And um, sure. yes, all your success. <laughs> I was born in Moscow in the family of a Navy officer, and this is why I'm fascinated by water and ships since childhood, and now I see them every day from my window. I grew up in St. Petersburg, but after the fall of the Iron Curtain and lived and worked in many countries. All of my life I was working in big multinational companies like Procter & Gamble, Carlsberg, Danone. 
eight or ten years ago, I started to write poetry, and I cannot explain it. I think it's just miracle that happened to me. Uh, I started from a short humoristic uh, poems, and uh, uh, little by little, it grew up into something more serious. Then, as a result, I can uh, show you the two books uh, that were issued quite recently in Russia and in Italy. The first book is called The First, actually, <laughs> and this is a Russian book which, I, uh, which was published in Moscow in Christmas 2020. I prepared it during the beginning of pandemics, and it's a very heavy volume. It contains 500 poems. Uh, inside, I split it into three big parts, which are called Birth, Life, and Return. And who read my book, uh, who reads my book till the end, will finds out that the book doesn't end. It returns to birth, to life, to return, and repeats its cycle ever and ever again. Uh, the book contains uh, the beautiful works by a Russian artist and sculptor whose name is Alexander Kostin. Uh, just let me show you an example, and I hope you can see some. Uh, it yes, looks yes. something like this. Mm -hmm. yes. And uh, uh, recently, uh, for the Christmas of 2021, uh, the Italian book was published. It, it has a similar cover uh, because the Italian publishing house liked the cover so much. But it is quite different in content. First of all, it is notably smaller. <laughs> Uh, second, uh, it is bilingual. It is uh, uh, it contains 81 poem translated by Paolo Statucci, a brilliant interpreter who translated all our classics from Pushkin to Pasternak and has more than 50 years of experience. Uh, most poems here are from the previous book, the first, but there are some poems which are newer and that were not yet published in Russia, but they are published in Italy uh, in the translations. And both books are interactive. Uh, they contain uh, QR codes. I'm just looking for some examples. Uh, so, for example, a QR code where you can listen to some uh, of the poems, sometimes read by me in Russian, sometimes by actors in Russian, sometimes in the Italian book, also by Italian actors. And uh, using the opportunity that I'm now here, I may, whenever you are ready, to read your a short poem in three languages, if you want. Yes, please. Okay, and then I can continue uh, talking a little bit about my future, my current project. Right. And my biography. So I want to share with you a poem that is called Three Sisters. It's a short one, don't worry. And I start with English so that you know what it is about. Then I'll read in Italian and finally in the original. Three Sisters, translation of Irina Rosenberg. The day has died. Keen are my eyes, but I am shy before the gate to twilight. Three sisters are the first to rise. The gold, the blue, the white. Poor globe dashes tipsy. With my own flesh I'll heal its wounds. Like my own kin, I love these sisters, the white, the gold, the blue. And when myself, beyond the edge, allowed by sky, so indivisible and whole, it will penetrate the universe throughout, the blue, the white, the gold. Thank you. And now in Italian, Le Tre Sorelle, translation of Paolo Statuti. Il giorno è morto. I miei occhi sono acuti, ma entrando nel crepuscolo sono scoraggiata. Per prime sorgono tre sorelle, bianca, azzurra, dorata. La povera sfera inebriata vola veloce, ferita, dalle mie mani sarà curata. Come sorelle germane io le amo, bianca, azzurra, dorata. E quando di superare i confini del cielo indivisibile mi sarà dato, Nell'universo dilagherà il mio io, bianco, azzurro, dorato. And Grazie. finally, I can, read, I can read by memory in Russian. Uh, when I read in Russian, I actually always read by memory. Umir dien, glaza mai astri, no vhoda v sumer ki rabiju ya. Pirvami, vas hodja tri sestri, zalataya, galubaya. 
Бедный шар несется в охмелю, Я собой пробоины заделаю, Как родных сестер я их люблю, Золотую, голубую, белую. И когда позволит за края Небо неделимое и целое, Разольется по вселенной я, Золотое, голубое, белое. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so tell us about your um, current projects and, um, yeah, the future projects. And probably uh, while the more poems will be translated into English, we will be expecting book in English. Oh, I hope so. So far, only five of my poems have been translated into English. So if among the audience uh, there are people who translate, I will be happy to cooperate. Okay, so uh, I mentioned already that I started to write poetry relatively recently, about eight, ten years ago. And two years ago, I decided to stop my work for the international companies because I thought, okay, everybody can be a marketing director or many people can be, but uh, no one will write uh, my poetry instead of me. So now I concentrate uh, basically on my books and uh, only after I left my job, I finally had time to concentrate and to put all the poems together. Then uh, uh, I also have restarted playing the piano that I learned as a child. And uh, now I'm very fortunate. Uh, every year I take uh, a part in a musical festival in Milan where I play with an orchestra. And in September, I played in Castello Sforzesco in Milan, uh, the castle of uh, Sforza, which is almost like Kremlin in Moscow, a very important institution. And now I'm preparing to play in Paris in two weeks from now. Uh, in September, an Italian composer, Giorgio Bernabò, has created a performance based on my poems. That is the fusion of music, poetry, ballet, art of declamation, visual art, architecture, uh, because it took part in Villa Tiena of the 15th century, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. I suggest you to view a short extract from this performance with my poem called Never. It is not translated in English, but in short, I ask my soul whether it will get tired one day to support my frail body. But the soul keeps raising me every morning for an invisible work in search of the only word that will never be found. Yeah, we definitely will show that video, yes. Anima mia, ti stancherai una volta di rinforzare le mie fragili ossa. Io ogni giorno mi spezzo di brama, di muta, immutabile angoscia. Ma ogni giorno tu mi inciti di nuovo. È un lavoro non visibile mi dai in cerca di un'unica parola che si troverà mai. Однажды скреплять мои худые позвонки. Я рассыхаюсь каждый день от жажды, от тихой, немигающей тоски. Каждый день ты поднимаешь снова меня для незаметного труда на поиске единственного слова, 
которая найдется никогда. And so now you tell us what is your plans, um, except that, yes, you're working on this maybe common book in English. And so you're preparing for another competition or just a festival? Uh, it is just a festival. I do not uh, like competitions and music or poetry, actually, I never take part. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but music, I just like uh, expressing myself. And I think that actually music and poetry are so interrelated. Oh, yeah. Yes, they help. Uh, music helps me in poetry, for example, in composition. It is not what, when I work at the poetry that I think, OK, I will create it like a sonata. No, but after I read it, I realize that, oh, actually, there is an influence of music. And I also write a lot about music. Then uh, talking about my recent and upcoming projects, uh, um, I'm now getting back to the topic from which we have started. Mm -hmm. I have recently took part in an international poetry marathon against the war, where I have represented also um, not only myself, but a Ukrainian poet, philosopher Alexander Pustovit mm -hmm. from Kiev. Uh, he chose a poem, uh, and on his behalf I read this poem. It was Anthem for Doomed Youth by Wilfred Owen, a poet who was killed just one week before the end of the World War, uh, the, the First World War, and he was only 25 years old. So the, the poem starts as, uh, what passing bells for these who die as cattle? So it is very relevant and it was very difficult for me to to read this poem because it stirs big emotions in me. Yes. And soon I will take part in another marathon fundraising to support Ukrainian children who have suffered from the war. I will participate with a poem called uh, Beethoven and uh, I will suggest that you show uh, it in uh, the end of our conversation. In the meantime, uh, I can tell you about how this poem was created and how this film was created. Yes, I think we, we don't have much time left, so I want you just to talk about the Beethoven, um, how the film was made. Yes, please. Yes. So the poem is based on the letters of Beethoven during the war with Napoleon, and I even included some lines from his, poem, uh, from his letters in my poem. I was writing it for three weeks and uh, it took all of me and after that I could not even write for a long time. And when the poem was finished, I always wanted to combine it with the seventh symphony of Beethoven, its second part. However, all the famous performances by Karajan and Fort Wengler, they were slower than I felt it inside. In fact, Beethoven marked it as allegretto, which means uh, cheerful, but they were not cheerful. <laughs> Uh, one day, however, I was fortunate to listen to the modern performance uh, conducted by Pavel Gerstein, and it was exactly the tempo of my reading. And I contacted Pavel, and fortunately he allowed me to use uh, the performance of uh, his orchestra, Kostroma Gubernski Orchestra. Uh, and so I immediately contacted my ex-colleagues, my colleagues from the previous life, with whom we, ha uh, we created a lot of advertising together. <laughs> Uh, my friends from Moscow, Anatoly Yasinski and Edward Usidus. And uh, it was difficult because I was in Italy, it was the pandemia, they were in Moscow and Vienna was in Vienna. So I had to learn to shoot myself and not on a selfie, but on a camera without seeing myself. It was quite an experience. Then they shoot uh, the footage in Moscow and they had to wait for the rain because they were shooting in May and the poem takes part in, uh, uh, happens in November. And uh, uh, a, a girl called Teotalva played my role there in Moscow. And then we bought the Vienna footage and it was a big challenge to bring it all together and make it look uh, like, a, like a whole, not like a patchwork. And uh, the poem is translated both into the Italian and into English. 
and uh, I will suggest you uh, I will suggest you the version where I read in Russian, but it has English titles, English subtitles. Yes, and yes. the translation again is made by Anna Krushenitska. Because it talks about the war, it is very in tune with what we are living through today, and Beethoven gives us strength. Well, I think, you know, we can talk hours and hours because uh, you have so many things going on and you were participating in, in a lot of um, projects. So we just hope that everything will go um, well and you will get more success, more readers, more admirers. Um, and thank you so much for being with us and give us that interview. So um, we... Um, Again, thank you so much, and we tell you goodbye, arrivederci. Thank you very much, goodbye, arrivederci, ciao. Ciao, ciao. Вы прикажете слугам не впускать Бетховена. Заблокируете его в мессенджерах и соцсетях. Одни воюют, другие манят биткоины, третьи интригуют и путаются в путях. Четвертые, смесь предыдущих двух, не попадают в вену. Истерическая правда вступает в свои права. По невзорванному мосту Французская армия входит в Вену. Я смотрю с него на Дунай. У меня кружится голова. Вы прикажете себе уехать. Уехать себя, ломая. Но сохраните письма, наложив седьмую печать. Я стою на мосту. Осень страшная и немая. Вы спрашиваете, как живу? Я предпочел бы не отвечать. Рядом Наполеон взрывают крепостные стены. Страх не добить лежачего, низость и незачет. И под мостом голубая кровь из вены течет, течет. Лучше блокаут, чем шепоток и сплетни. Черный квадрат в себе заключает все. Снявший голову, хорошо смеется последний над временем, бравшим нам, что все унесет. Ваши письма найдут через полтора века, переведут, издадут. Я читаю их спустя два. Жаль, до меня сказали, от всего человека нам остается часть речи. У меня кружится голова. Ощущали вы, живьем обрубая самое себя. Беда здесь или вина? Все течет, течет по вене кровь голубая. И вы живы, пока вливается вам она. Разрушение, опустошение, барабаны и мародеры. Город, земля, душа в огне, в огне. Значит, в самом себе он будет искать опору и найдет. Заодно добавя ее и мне. Я стою, вцепившись в перила, И в гулком громе различать начинаю Издалека, едва. Только звуками Ах, не слишком ли я не скромен, думаю, что звуки мне послушнее, чем слова. Только звуками, из бесформенной тьмы, на ощупь. И пускай он не слышит ни стереокоммонат, ни тишины, но так вернее и проще, потому что музыка над.